so the advanced car builder, great question I had last week. Um, it's so good when you guys send questions in and uh, I hear, you know, from people individually, I see stuff on the, on the groups and then I see stuff come, um, they, they send me some, some of the questions that come through the help desk so that I know the best things that you guys are asking. So one of the questions um, we can't, that came in last week was about the advanced builder. Why is there two builders and what does it mean? And does everybody get to use it? So <clears throat> talk about that first. So this is the Shuffle desktop version. You uh, log in at lfishuffle.com and um, this is your, your desktop. This is also available on the web on your app um, or I'm sorry, not on the web, on your phone, on an app. The next thing is, is that when you build um, on one, it happens, you know, on the other. So you don't have to do this twice. We'll talk about that later when we pull the app up. But um, so this is my account. Um, these are my cards. These uh, card index are cards that are sent to me. Activity is anything going on with my account. Contacts are just like your phone contacts, but they're your shuffle contacts. Discover allows you to friend or discover other people that are in LFI Nation, anybody who's on the shuffle app. Uh, channels is a way to uh, connect and, and chat with one another. Um, create is where you create your cards. Notifications. Also a chatter, again, internal chatting, um, and then your account information will be found here in the top right-hand corner. So we are going to talk about creating, and we're gonna create a card today. So the two builders, the uh, standard card builder was the original builder uh, three years ago when Shuffle first launched. Um, it has, I think about 20 templates in it. They're great templates. They're great starter templates. They're still available. But basically, um, it was just kind of where we started. So it was just um, different layouts and you would put information in and wherever you put the information, that's where it stayed. So that was the layout that you were given. The advanced card builder, the newer card builder, um, allows you to take those same sort of templates, um, but you're able to uh, kind of design them a little bit and manipulate the, the where the places, uh, where the, the different things are located in the card. So the advanced builder is available um, for you to use. Uh, we had somebody uh, mistaken that they, they thought that's where all of the, the custom cards were. No, absolutely, you guys. Go in there and play with the advanced card builder. It really lets you um, kind of become more, uh, almost like a designer, the drag and drop designer. Um, and then we will talk about um, tomorrow. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that advanced card builder so y'all can see it. Tomorrow, um, like I said with Guy, we will talk about Marketplace. So if you haven't seen Marketplace, this is where it's located. Um, so you will have your templates here that we're gonna choose from. We're gonna talk about the templates here in a second. And then Marketplace here. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that in tomorrow's training. Um, so standard templates, what do you choose? What are you looking at? What are the choices, right? So those, that's the first question. So again, there's about 20 templates. You can see your choices here. Um, and how do you choose what templates you wanna start with? So let's talk about that. So for example, here, number 13, let's look at here in the top right-hand corner. If you look at this card, um, you will see, first of all, that if you put your mouse over it and just let it sit there and let it scroll, um, it will scroll and let you see all the different elements on that card. But if you can tell from right here, one of the things I want to show you before you even click on it and choose it, is I can see that the social media and the photo, the main photo of the card, are connected in one section of that card. So yes, I can take that social media bar and move it on either side of that photo, but I can't move it anywhere else on the card. Um, another example of that would be if we scroll down here to number seven. So if you look at this one here, this card, this template, the, the contact, like the phone number, the text, the email is gonna be also attached to that photograph. So I can put it on either side, but I can't put it up anywhere else in the card. So just remember when you're choosing your template, um, make sure it, it contains all the elements that you want it to and make sure it has the layout that you want to get started with. This is why I always, I always tell everybody like, my favorite template is 18. It doesn't have to be your favorite template, I love template 18 simply for the fact that it has, and I'm gonna go ahead and select it now. It has all of the elements in the card that are available. 
And it also allows me to move those elements, every single one of them, anywhere I want them to be. And so I'll show you an example of that in a minute. Welcome to everybody that just joined us. I'm just letting people in as we go. We're just gonna we're recording this, so you know it is being recorded. Um, and we'll take we'll, we're gonna do some kind of sections, and then we'll pause and we'll take um, some questions. So, um, okay. So first of all, you choose a template and you're creating a new card. What's the first thing to do? The first thing you need to think about is the card title. So remember that the card title is for your eyes only. It's what Shuffle is going to call that card. Um, so if you are sending, say for example, um, I'm sending my business card about Shuffle, I may call it my Shuffle card. If I'm sending my business card about a nonprofit that I'm in, I'm going to call it, you know, my nonprofit card. So Shuffle is going to tell you, um, for example, you know, if I send it to Sanders, Sanders viewed your nonprofit card. So whatever you call it, that's what the card title is, totally for your eyes only. So today I'm just going to do a um, digital, whoops, Let's see if it'll let me type. Yeah, digital card pro sample. Okay, so I'm just going to make a sample. We'll call it digital card pro sample. It puts my first um, name, of course, this is my training account, puts my first and last name in there from my profile. So the more information you have set in your profile, if you have set a photo, your name, your social media, anything you have set in there, these cards are made even faster, right? Because it's going to suck all that information over. If you want every card to be different, that's okay too, right? So I might have um, a different email address for my personal card versus my nonprofit card. And that's fine. Every one of them can be um, individual and every card can have different information. Um, so my email pops in there, a phone number pops in there. Um, so we'll put card pro and then we'll put trainer. And then if you want an address, okay, the important thing to know about address, I always tell people like, just think before you put it in there, um, is it is going to put a map on your card. So if you want to map people to your front door, perfect. Like if you own a brick and mortar or you're doing an event, or maybe this is for a surprise birthday party, who knows? And you're trying to give somebody a location, put it in there. If you don't want them to show up at your house, because <laughs> maybe you work from home, I wouldn't put it in there. Now you can put something super generic. I could just put a Dallas, Texas, and it would pop up in a map of Dallas. Um, but so just remember that address will put a map on your, your card. So then I'm going to go ahead and hit create. All right, so now is when the magic happens. Oh, oh, that's interesting. It didn't go to the edit. So I guess I hit create and edit because I've never had to do that before. So that's new, create and edit. <laughs> We're gonna learn things today, who knew? Um, okay, so then you get your template to pop up. So on the right-hand side, you'll see the template that we're gonna be working on. And on the left-hand side, you'll see the column that's gonna give us all the choices of what we can do to that template, okay? Um, so I'm gonna pause really fast because I can only see a couple people. Um, is there anybody that has a question before we go into creating this card on templates, on anything that we've done so far, the desktop, anything like that? I'm trying to watch chat as well. So if you guys have questions, just let me know. Okay. All right, good, good. So let's keep going. So now we're gonna create a card and I'm gonna try and keep it as simple as possible. But again, um, I want you guys to see how much fun this can be, okay? So first things first, we're just gonna start big and then come down to the, to, to the nitty gritty. The purple gear, so you see the purple gear. You click on the purple gear, look at how simple this is. You have a couple choices. You have a background color that's already there for you, the solid color, photo, or video. Here's the important thing to know about this background. It's only for people viewing on desktop. I think it's 95% of um, viewers that view our cards on mobile, but that's okay because we are going to have a nicer desktop version now than we did before when it had the phone encapsulating the card and it had, um, you know, the, the, you know, scroll here to view. Now our desktop version looks beautiful, right? So people can come on here and see what looks more like a website. So 
So if you want to change that blue color, you can. I just want you to know that that's the purple gear. You can change the background color um, to match the card. You can change it to match the background. You can put, like I said, a photo. So this is just a default um, photo that they have back there with a pattern on it. You can even put a video. So this is just a loaded YouTube video. You can see it's just some water that goes by. So have some fun with that, but just remember that the purple gear background is um, only for desktop viewers. So that's where that kicks in. I'm just gonna make it away. Okay, now let's go to the next box. The next box is gonna be the blue gear right here. So I'm gonna click on that blue gear. This is now the background of the mobile size business card or landing page or whatever you wanna call it because it can be so many different things, right? Invitation, a hello, a thank you, a happy birthday, a ask for testimonial card, anything you want it to be, right? So one thing to know about this is because I have noticed that a lot of times we have logos and photos that have this like stark bright white background. If you notice, it doesn't match. So the default right here is this kind of like off-white color, like kind of a little bit of a light gray, is if I want it to match those stark white logos, I immediately turn that white. And you have to preview it. This is where it gets, this is the one thing to know. When you change the background of the card, you have to preview it to see, to get it to kick in. See how that just changed and now it all blends together? So then I go back to edit and I can do whatever I want. Now again, blue gear, background of the card, I can do the same options. I can make it a fully um, color, one color. I can make it a photo and I can make it a video. I have all those same choices, okay? Um, okay, so now we've set our background background color, the one that works on desktop. We've set the background color for our card, the one that people are gonna see when they view it on mobile. Now we're gonna start working on each individual part of the card, okay? So first of all, LFI, where it says LFI, you don't have to leave that. That is not branding to the card. I've had that asked me before also. Um, they're like, hey, I don't mind telling people that LFI, you know, I made the card on LFI, but can I move that anywhere? And I'm like, it actually doesn't even have to stay there. <laughs> So this is where your logo can go. So this does not have to be branded to LFI. I'm gonna go ahead. Um, so on the left-hand column, um, this is everything that I can do to that element. So I'm working on the logo element. Here's all my choices. So the first thing I'm gonna do is click on change. And I have just this little Digital Card Pro logo. So I pop that in there, it immediately changes um, the photo. If you need to, you can hit crop. You can crop the picture. Like say I wanted to have a little bit less space on the top and bottom. Um, hold on, I gotta move y'all a second. There we go. I can do it from up here. There we go. Then I can crop that. Um, I can change the size. So you can see right here, it gives you an idea. It says maximum size. I can't even imagine what that would look like. 2,667 and right now it's set at 130. So if you change the number on the left hand side. So say for example, we make this 400. There you go. It pops it open. It automatically does the right hand size and, and um, keeps it the right um, proportions for you. Okay. So you can ch change that. You can play with it. You can, you know, make it look like you want it to look like here's 800. And then I'm like, eh, I'm going to take it back down to 400. Right. So it's totally up to you what that looks like. Um, the other thing to know, so, and this is, you'll see these same options on many of the different um, um, elements, okay, is so you can change the size. We're going to go back to link in a second. You can change the size. You can change the margin. So you can either change this box here means you're going to change one mark or every margin at once. And this box here means you're going to change each side individually. So let's say, for example, I want my logo to be all the way up here flush with the top of the card. So I look at this little arrow that points up and I make it a zero. So I've just taken away any space between the logo and the top side, top um, of the, the card, okay? If I wanna add that back in, or maybe I wanna make it even bigger, let's make it a 30. So I can tell it exactly where I want that logo to sit. 
on the card. So I can change um, each side individually or I can change them all together. Same with the border. So we now can add a border. This would be no border. This is gonna be all four sides and this is gonna be one side at a time. So if I wanted to add a four-sided border and I want it to be 10 point font, so I want it 10 and wide. Oh, that's 110, sorry, 10 wide. And I want it to be whatever, teal. I can now do that and I can even make it solid dashed, whatever I want it to look like. So I have all those different choices, okay? If I want to just make one side, say I just want one at the bottom. So I can take that one out. I can go to the, just the bottom. I can say I want 10 point in red. So let's preview that so you guys can see what that looks like. So now it's got that 10 or it's got the red there. It did leave that one point all around. I think I have to go in there and tell it I want, would want none. Let's see what that would look like. Turn the left side white, turn the top to white, and turn the right side to white. Now let's see. There we go. So now it's just left that bottom line in there. So again, infinite possibilities of playing with this and making it look different, having some fun. You can do these with um, any of the pictures, the logo, the picture. There's lots of different ways that you can play with these. The last part of that border, so I'm gonna show you a full border so you can see what this looks like, cause it's pretty cool. So I'll put that black 10 point border back in there is the radius. So again, you can do it to the whole box or you can do it individually per, per side. So if I do it to the whole box and I make it a 30 point radius, you can see that it just rounded those edges. The higher the number, the more it comes in up until you get it into like a circle. Okay, that is simply the logo portion. <laughs> Before I keep going, I lose anybody with any of that. We all good, any questions? You can pop them in chat, you can put them, you can unmute whatever you guys got. Okay, so before we move on from that, I want you to, we're gonna go back to the link. So in the link, you can link the logo. So if somebody was scrolling your card and they clicked on your logo, if you want them to that to take them to say your website um, or you know a product page or anywhere on the net and the web, you can do that. You can put a link behind behind that and tell it that it's a URL. The cool thing is you could tell it whatever you want it to be. So you could actually have that link. You can see on the left hand side on that drop down box to an address, to a YouTube, to a Vimeo. You could have it be a phone number, a text, an email, Skype, WhatsApp, Snapchat, Line ID, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. Anywhere you would want that to link, you just have to put the link in the URL in the box and tell it what it's linking to. So even if I wanted this to go, like if they clicked on my logo, um, let's say I wanted it to go, I'm just making something up, to a phone number and to call me, all I have to do is tell it it's a phone number. Okay, so total control over where these pictures and where these links go um, under many, many, many of the different um, elements of the card. Okay, all right, hold on one second, I see something in chat. Awesome, okay, cool. Um, all right, so let's move on. So now we've got our logo and we've got it set to the size we want it and we've got a border around it and we've got some um, border radius set. So it's got that nice little edge to it. So the next thing in this particular card is a uh, picture carousel. So in the carousel, you can have multiple pictures. I've yet to figure out what the, what the limit is. <laughs> I know some friends that have like 30, 40, 50 pictures in this. Um, so we haven't found the limit yet. They will scroll either um, by clicking on the arrows or you can set it to auto scroll. 
The other really cool thing is that every one of these can have a link to them. So say, for example, you sell, um, pick something, essential oils, right? So you sell essential oils and on the first one you have, um, oh gosh, now I've just set myself up and I don't know the names of any of them. Uh, you have um, lemon, right? So there's a picture of the lemon essential oil and all the things that it does. And if they click that box, it's going to take you, them to your website that, that has the place to order that particular oil. And then it keeps scrolling, the auto scroll, and then it gets to, uh, I don't know, what's so bad. Uh, rosemary. And then you can click on that one and it goes to that page to order that, right? So you can put a link or a PDF set behind every single one of these pictures for people to be able to kind of research and, and look into what you're offering. So how do we do that? Okay, so again, we've chose the uh, photo carousel section. So then the left-hand column changes to tell us these are the actions that you can take on that particular section. So we're gonna click on change. And I actually did this a little minute ago. So let's see if this worked. Okay, good. So I just took some pictures of some of the new templates that are in Marketplace. So let's say, for example, myself as Digital Card Pro wanted to show somebody um, some of the new cards that are coming in Marketplace. So here's one for insurance. So it's just a quick picture. I mean, I know I could do this better. I was just like, what can I show them? So <laughs> um, there's one for insurance. And if I wanted to, again, I could crop it by clicking here. I could delete it by clicking here. Or if I want to set a link, I just click on that box, tell it what I want it to link to, what kind of link it is, or if it's a PDF file, so maybe you have like an information about that product, you can actually upload a PDF file to there. Um, so then I want to hit another one. So I'm going to hit change. I'm going to upload another photo. So here's one for realtors. I can't wait to go over this tomorrow. It's super fun. Now, so now I have two photos, one, two, these are both loaded, but what if I want more, right? So then I tell it I want to add a product image, change, load again. These are all just in my computer files. I just took photos of them earlier and, and put them in a photo, in a, in a file, in a folder. Now I have three. Okay, so I can go through and I can click on the arrow. Or I can tell it right here, I want you to auto scroll and I want you to auto scroll. If it's a photo that they don't have to read, I usually do about three seconds. If it's a, um, what's it called? Uh, testimonial, like if somebody wrote up a, like a testimonial sentence or two and they put the testimonials on here, I slow it down a little bit so people have a chance to read the words. Um, so those are, that's our, uh, photo carousel. Okay. Next section right here, this button that says learn more. This is a web button. So this is going to take them to wherever you want to send them on the web. So if it's your website, if it's uh, literally anything you want it to be, if it's a particular place on your website, you can have multiple buttons, unlimited, every one of these sections per card. Um, so let's say, for example, we want this to go to our website. So you can change the size of the buttons now. So if you want to make them bigger or smaller, you can put a little icon. So let's say, for example, uh, what would I want to put on here? Um, cell phone. So let's say, for example, I wanted to put a mobile phone. So there's a little icon pops up on there. I'm going to put um, click to visit. So I'm going to tell them they can click here to visit my website. Um, I can bold it. I can italicize it. I can make the font bigger or smaller. I can change the text color. I can change the background color. I can change the font. I can add in my URL. So whatever, again, whatever link I wanted to link to, I just know that that's one I could use. Say, for example, I had one, um, if I wanted it to link to the shuffle, 
I could just pull up the, the page that I wanted the link to, grab that URL, hit copy, hit paste, and that's the URL now that's going to be under there. So if you're building this to go to certain web pages, just pull that page open, whatever it is, and copy and paste that URL. Again, same thing as we just did the margins. We can change the margins um, so where the, the um, button sits on the page. We can also change the padding, which is where does the word sit in the button? Um, so literally just go in and start pushing, but you cannot break to hold you guys. That's what's so awesome. Change the buttons, change the numbers. If you don't like them, just change them back. <laughs> That's what I love about Shuffle. Like we cannot break it. It's just foolproof. This is exactly how I've learned it, just by pushing buttons and trying to figure out how it all works. So hold on one second, let me see. Okay, sounds good. Um, you can also select multiple images and upload, yes, okay. Um, all righty. So that is our web buttons. Again, say for example, I wanted to have more than one. All I do is clone it. And then I have another button if I want them to go to a different website. Okay. Um, next section. Next section is our YouTube or Vimeo video. So I'm going to click on that section. Um, so all you have to do for this, super simple, is, so I have this pulled up already. So say I wanted to put a YouTube or Vimeo video. All you do is go to that, go to the video that you want. So here's a video that I did um, back in January. We were training Shuffle. Okay, so, oh, hold on, it's got to get to the video itself. Okay, so yeah, I thought I had this pulled up. Okay, so here's the video that I want to put in there. And what I do is I just click share. I copy this link. I go back to the card that I'm building. And I paste that. There it is. So all I have to do is paste in either the Vimeo link or the YouTube link um, into this box. You can also now change how big it is. So if you want the video to appear a little bit smaller, you can do that. So now we've got this card going. Okay, now next section. I know I'm gonna, like now I'm starting to speed up because we're gonna talk about so much stuff today. Um, next section is our paragraph. Another um, just good thing to know about the paragraph. The paragraph does not have to be about shuffle. I have seen people that leave this exact paragraph on there. You can certainly, but this paragraph or any paragraph that you put in here is intended to be about you, the product, the service, whatever it is that this card is about, right? So if you're sending a card to somebody, I mean, in the last three years, the people have come up with the most amazing ideas and what they've done with the cards. Um, They've used them for, like I said, uh, uh, undercover, you know, birthday parties, you know, getting invitations to people without having to print anything for surprise, you know, parties um, to invite them to come, you know, work out with their, their CG workout group to come visit, you know, their church to come visit their, um, I use them to, you know, come visit my networking group. I use them for my businesses. I use them for my, the nonprofit that I'm involved with. I use them for, I mean, just, I always say like, whatever you, you know, if you type something more than two or three times and you're consistently sharing or inviting somebody to it, just make a shuffle card for it, right? Make a shuffle card to your Zoom room. Make a shuffle card um, to any clubs that you're in that you invite people to. There's so many different ways to use those 10 cards. They're gonna, you're going to use them up really fast. So, um, okay, so the paragraph, again, once you click it, you're using that left-hand column to make the changes. So if I want them to know, um, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot at the same time. I did to see. I told you. See, I did to show you how. You are yes, you are. All right, so whatever I want to say, right? So blah, 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 blah. Um, and then I can, what can I do with it? I can make it larger. I can center it. I can change the text color. Let's see what color, purple. I can bold. I gotta, 
um, I, can, I think there's italicize. Yeah, italicize. Uh, again, the padding. Um, so again, anything that you want to do to the paragraph and the words are there. Now, another thing I do get this question a lot is um, what else can you do with this? So if you wanted to uh, clone the paragraph section. So here's a second one that I've made. Here's a clone. Say, for example, I want to um, January 2021. Say, for example, I want to put a hold on heading over this video. So I can just make this look like that. I can bold it. I can change the font size. I can make it look more like a title. I can change that padding, take that padding out so it's a little bit closer um, to it. And now I've made it look more like it's a, a title to this video. So if you need to stack, you know, video, title, video, title, video, title, video to give a little bit of a break, you can do that, put those in the center. So again, the paragraph is not just a paragraph. It's whatever, it's just a place for the words, whatever the words need to be for you. Okay. All right. Social media. Let's talk about this section right here. So Facebook, I just pulled up a couple of mine so I could show you guys how I do these. Um, so again, you can change the size of the buttons. You can put different icons in there. You can change the color. So say you wanted this exactly to be opposite. So I can copy that blue color. I can make that box the blue color and I can make the text color white. So you, oh, I just did the same. Thing. See, brain's not completely working. There we go, opposite. So now the button is white and the text is blue. So you guys can change these to any color you want to. If you want them to be rainbow colors, if you want them to really stand out and be super fun, um, you can do whatever makes you happy. That's what I love, just makes me happy. Look how pretty. All right, so how do we set the link? So if I'm on Facebook, I go to whatever Facebook page that I want to um, have under that. So is it my personal Facebook page? Is it my business Facebook page? Is it my corporate Facebook page? It's whatever you guys want it to be, or it can be all of them. Totally up to you, right? So this is mine. I just went to my Facebook. I went to my profile, copy and paste that URL. Now you can see here, it defaults to LFI. So if you don't change it, you're sending everybody to the LFI Facebook page, which is fine too, but that's probably not what you're trying to do. <laughs> um, Twitter, so if, again, if you don't have it, you can just delete it and you'll see that it kind of voids out and then it won't appear. Instagram, same thing. I just went to my profile, copy, paste, oops, okay. Uh, LinkedIn, same thing. If you go to your LinkedIn page, go under me, go to profile, it'll pop open your profile. So if you have it and you want to link it, you can put it on there. If you don't have it, you don't want to link it. For example, YouTube, let's say I don't want one. I just delete it. Goes away. Now, when we preview this card, you can see just those buttons are appearing. Okay. You can, if you want to, move them. Say that I think that... Um, Instagram is, you know, a bigger platform for me than Facebook. I can put that one first. So you can put them in any order that you want. Okay, a couple more sections and we'll do some questions on the build. Um, so photo, this is your main photo. The important thing to know about this photo is if you have iPhone and you, when you text a card and it pops open a preview, this is the picture that it's going to preview. So um, this is typically your headshot. Some people are like, I don't want my photo on my, on my card. That's fine. This could be a logo. This could be a product. This could be, again, it's open-ended. You decide what you want on these cards. Completely up to you. Um, so same, same. We're just going to hit change. I'll pick my logo from back before my hair, <laughs> my headshot. Uh, we'll stick that in there. And uh, again, you can change the size. You can change, um, you can crop it. You can put a link behind it, margins, borders, 
order radius, same thing. Have fun, play with that. We won't go into all those details. We did that earlier. So again, push buttons, um, hit save, don't save, totally up to you, can't break shuffle. Um, your name, each one of the boxes on your name is separate. So again, if you want to change colors, have some fun with that, there's no reason not to. Um, have different colors on there, whatever you want to do, um, you can change those. You can also um, change your, individually change your uh, company and your title. Totally, they're separate sections. Again, they can be, let's see, we'll pick something fun. We'll do pink. Here we go. Um, I can make it bold. I can change the font size. So you guys literally just come in here and play with all these little boxes. The good thing again to know is that they're all there for you, however you want to use them. Same, let's go down here to all how to contact you. Phone, text, email. Again, the phone number is gonna come out of your profile. Email is gonna come out of your uh, profile. The text is not. So do know that you need to grab your phone and go ahead and put it under your text. Um, this is your location. So again, if you just wanna, if you want to have somebody show up at your front door or you have a brick and mortar, or you just wanna put a generic, you can do that. Um, but just remember that if you do put an address there, it's gonna put a map on your card. And then again, if you have any of these things, you can always go in here and add your Skype, your IM, um, chat, uh, Snapchat, what is this, uh, anything you want. But you can also change these. So say for example, um, I had somebody do this the other day. We did, I think it was, hold on. Yeah, it was a microphone. And he put a link. Uh, I don't remember what it was exactly, but I'll just put a link in here so you can see. It was YouTube podcast. So then that little microphone becomes a link to the podcast and then that will show up under there. So again, could be your podcast, could be your Calendly, um, anything that you want to link on there, you can put your own little pizzazz to that. Uh, last couple things is going to be forward my info, save my info. You can now. Yay. change the colors if you want different color buttons here you can also change the little icons if you want them to look different or to be a different color you can play with those you can also hide them by clicking on the gear if you don't need these for some reason or you don't want one or the other maybe you want save but not forward or forward but not save um, or maybe you're making this look more like a landing page and you don't want either, you can hide them both. And then your invite code and Powered by Shuffle. Again, these are separate columns. When you click on the yellow gear, I will say for whatever reason, it's not, um, so here I'll show you, see? It's not using the same background as the card background. So it's still that off white color. So typically I go in here and I make sure to change that color to whatever my background color is so it matches. So that's the card we just built. The last thing I'm gonna tell you and then we're gonna open it up for questions is whatever you've done here, anything you've done, all the different sections, if you've cloned sections, whatever you have to work with, you can now move. So if I decide I've got every element in here that I want, but I want my picture first and then I want my name, And then I want my social media. I can put these in any order that I want to put them. That is the beauty of template 18, that you can literally drag and drop these and put them in any order you want to. Okay, so there's our preview. I guess the last thing I should say is if you don't have something, so you don't have a logo or you don't want to use that section, you can just hide it, preview it, then it won't appear. So if you don't have one, don't sweat it. Do you have one? You can put it back. Okay, all right, I see something in chat. 
question. All right, let's do questions on build and then we'll go to the next section. You can either type it in chat or turn on your microphone. And I'm gonna grab a drink. Hey, Kathy, hey. can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, it's Tracy. Lindsay, how are you? I'm awesome, thank you. Sorry, I was trying to get a quick drink in there. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna make this really quick. First of all, I just wanna say you are amazing. Thank you for taking your time on a Saturday no to help worries. do this demonstration. I've been playing with the advanced card yeah. So I've been doing pretty well with it, but that one feature with the business card, I didn't know about enlarging the card. I didn't okay. know that we could do that. So that was very helpful. Awesome. So that, yeah. Now at the bottom of the card, and maybe I might be ahead of myself, the yep. campaign form. Yeah. What is that field? What is that field there? Absolutely. Okay. So let's talk about that campaign form. Cause I think this is what the question was yesterday on Friday or say yesterday. Yeah. Friday with the founders. So the campaign form so what it is, first of all, what is the campaign form? That's when you go in to a card and you create a campaign and you could add that lead capture. So maybe you have a lead capture that says like your first, what's your first name? What's your last name? Um, I typically put something like, uh, uh, how, what's the best method to contact you? Uh, what's your cell phone? What's your email? That kind of stuff, right? So you just, you, you create a contact card, like card, a, a questionnaire, right? The nice thing about this card is that now, instead of only being able to put them on the bottom, you can put them wherever you want on the card. So if, say, for example, I want you to see my logo. And the first thing I want is to ask you some questions. And then you see the rest of my card. Um, maybe you're in um, health and wellness, right? And you're, you have a questionnaire that you want somebody to answer before they come in and visit you. So you can put that front and center, right in the middle of your card with whatever custom questions you wanna ask them. The campaign form here, when you're building the card is simply the placeholder. It's telling you where those questions are going to appear. Okay, okay. Does that help? Yes, thank you okay. very much. Absolutely. Any other questions on build specifically? Hello. Hello. Yes, this is Genevieve. Hello. Uh, I, I had my, my video on, but I turned it off. No okay, worries. now, whenever you move a section mm -hmm. and you can move it up, it's going to automatically push the rest of the information down. Correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, another question. Okay. Okay. Oh, wow. I had the brain fart. Um, <laughs> happens. Oh, well, I, happens. It's Saturday. <laughs> it is not coming to me. That's um, fine. I can come uh, back to you. Okay. Um, oh, my goodness. I, sh I shouldn't have been so quick that, that <laughs> I had another one. Oh. Same way. Don't worry about it. We'll go to Angel. We'll come right back. Angel, what was your question? Hi there. I, didn't, I actually didn't have a question. I just oh. wanted to say great job. Um, I got on a little bit late and it was funny. I was putzing around in it and just learning about what you were teaching at that moment, the, the padding and the sizing and the, it, this is the coolest tool ever. So See, I just right. want to say- You just got to play with it. You just, it, it is the coolest tool ever. And I'm, I was busy signing people up, which is why I was late. So <laughs> I'm having a blast. That's Thank a totally so good much. reason. We completely will take that excuse. No, not yeah. at all. <laughs> Thanks. Have a great rest of the class. Absolutely. Absolutely. Did, I mean, did you think of your question? No, it's not coming back to me. <laughs> well, I'm, it will. I'm, We're I'm, not going anywhere. <laughs> well, okay. But this, this is great. Thank you so much. And I'm glad that uh, my friend sent it to me because uh, I'm a note taker. So I've been step by step. So this absolutely, is really absolutely. And that's the great thing is this, this is going to be taped. This one that I, actually, this one right here, if y'all haven't watched it, I don't know if it's better than this one, worse than this one. I don't know. It was one we did in January. Um, so that, that um, how to build is already available. 
Um, we have a fantastic social media gal, Janice, who, who makes everything that I do prettier. Um, and then she puts it out on YouTube for us. So there is a bunch of these videos um, made already. So if you want to go back to this January one, it's already up and you won't have to wait for this one until she, she gets this one ready for us. But she's quick, man. So don't worry about that. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And you guys probably should hit save more than I do. But um, we're going to go ahead and hit save on that. Again, we're gonna preview it. So top right hand corner is preview. This is what it's gonna look like for a desktop version. And if you haven't noticed here in the center, you can also click on the little box. This is what it's gonna look like for a mobile version. So you're gonna be able to see that live. All right, I'm gonna hit back. We're gonna go back up to our desktop. Now, this is the card that I just built. But the cool thing is, I'm gonna stop that share. I'm gonna pop open my phone. All right, here we go. So here's Shuffle. First tip, never turn Shuffle off. There's no reason to log out of Shuffle, right? I like to know at two o'clock in the morning, if somebody's viewing my card, when I wake up the next day, I wanna know that view happened, right? Leave Shuffle on. It is your personal like marketing central, right? This is how you're marketing yourself. We may have social media. We may have a social media company that does social media for us. We may have, who knows what we have, right? We have all kinds of stuff that's out there, but this is how we are personally marketing ourselves every day using this tool. So make sure it's turned on, make sure your notifications are turned on. Um, I even make mine sticky. So I have to swipe them away. I don't let them like just disappear. The other thing is put shuffle on your home, on your first page and put it next to your phone or your Facebook. Whatever it is that you go to the most, make sure it is in your face and you remember that you have this tool because this tool is super cool, okay? So when I go to Shuffle, I can now see the cards that I have built here appear here, okay? So all my activity, my contacts, everything that I do on the desktop is now in, in the um, app. Okay. Um, I will say, just so you guys know, when you create a new card from here, this is the old card builder. So these, these are the old templates. This is not the advanced builder. The advanced builder is not um, on the app. I'm not sure if that will come in the future, but right now it's so advanced that's not even able to do the actions that we can do in the app yet. So you want to build on desktop and then come over here um, to send. Okay. We're gonna go over contacts. Okay, so we did this uh, a couple of weeks ago on Q and A on Tuesday, and somebody was just like, "Oh my gosh, that was super helpful!" And I was like, "Oh, well, that was super simple, so we can do that again." Um, so what we're gonna do is here in the center, we're gonna talk about contacts, and I'm gonna tell you guys how I work with contacts. And I apologize, this is my training um, account, not my personal account, so it does make it a little bit harder for me because the information isn't just populated. But we'll just make it up as we go. So if you're brand new to Shuffle, this is what your contacts looks like. Um, contacts to me, I call contacts the heart of Shuffle, right? So once you've built your cards, you don't need to go back and build them. You need to maintain them, but you don't need to go and rebuild them constantly, right? So now comes the time that you're out sharing, you're out you know, sending information, retrieving information, talking to people, getting to know people. And now's the time when contacts kicks in. So when I meet somebody, literally, I meet somebody, I just did this on Thursday at a networking meeting. And they, they're like, hey, can I get your card? Absolutely. I pull open contact. I push on that little green button, or I think in Android, it might be up at the top, like it's a plus sign. And I say, here you go. And I hand them my phone. They know how to spell their name. They know their phone number better than I do. I don't have to ask them four times how to spell their email, right? Let them type it in. So they type it in and they usually scroll. They'll go, what else do you need? And I'm like, oh, whatever, you, you know, put in there whatever you want to give me. That'd be great. Then they go, oh, wait a minute. I can just give you my business card? You sure can. So if they hand you your, their business card, you can also hit scan and scan and load their business card. Here, I can do one right here business card. So you can hit scan, take a picture, take the picture and upload it straight into their contact. 
So if you haven't played with that, it's super fun. Double check it. Google does its best to read everything the way it should be. So see, it says, it thinks my first name is Polka. It, it's Kathy. I just pushed the little gray arrow. Um, last name. I can go in there and change it. So you double check that it gets all the information correct. And I usually go here. I know these get expensive and I hand it back to them. I don't need it, right? I've got it. Because look, Shuffle is going to remember it for me. I can add them to my phone contacts. I'm not because I'm already in my own phone contacts probably 200 times. But there's the business card. So now in my contacts, I have your name, your phone number, your email, a copy of your business card, your website, anything else you shared with me. And I have, I will never forget, right? I have, I mean, you're in here forever. Everyone I've met in the past three years is in my phone. It's amazing. That's a huge tool right there, right? Um, this is also where you can take notes and make follow-up reminders and do all kinds of activity with this person. I remember back um, years ago, the first direct sales company I was ever with, we used to have like a half a sheet of paper, right? So I would go to shows and I would have somebody fill out their name and their phone number and their email and all the information and whatever. And I would have this great conversation with this person. I sold discovery toys, if you guys are familiar with that, or educational toys for kids. And I'd learn all about them and their kids and play with them and sell them some toys or whatever. Well, as soon as that person left my table or my booth or my show or hostess, you know, whatever event it was, I would take that piece of paper and I would flip it over on the back and I'd start to write down like, um, you know, she's got two kids. They're these ages. They, um, they bought this. She's interested in holiday shopping. Um, you know, her husband's name is Bob, whatever I wanted to remember about that person, because the next time I talked to her, I was going to use all that information that I collected to make sure she knew that I remembered who she was. Now you can do it right here in notes, right here, make a note. I just make a quick note about that person. What did they purchase for me? What are they interested in purchasing from me? What did we talk about? What's her kid's names? Um, what's her husband's name? What's her dog's name? Whatever you learn. And guess what? These notes back in the day when I needed them and I had, you know, an hour because I was sitting in a carpool, they were sitting at home. These notes are with me 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This has become my brain right? So use the note section on people that you meet and remember things about them because they always appreciate that and they always notice it. I promise you that. Follow reminders. Obviously, you know, when you text a card, it automatically asks you, do you need to follow up with this person? But you can also put them in yourself. You can go in follow up reminders under any one of your contacts and put one out, you know, maybe a week out, a month out, six months out, whatever, when you're doing your follow up calls with somebody. Um, Activity just tells you what have you already shared with them. You can edit the contact if you need to. You can put them under tags. If you guys haven't played with tags yet, we'll talk about that. That's kind of a 201. So campaigns, tags, intros, all that good stuff. We'll do that in another class. Um, but here's the thing. Here's the kicker. And most people, I don't think, realize this. You can send your card from this page. You don't have to go back to cards and find the card and then send it to the contact. You can send the card from the contact. So I'm talking to you. I hand you my phone. You put in your information. I get it back. And I'm still, I'm still like, oh, so blah, blah, blah. What do you do? Yada, yada, yada. Meanwhile, I hit my shared card, that very first link right there. I pick the card that I want to send them. I tell myself how I'm going to send it to them. I usually customize, so just so you guys know, and I hit send card. And in front of that link, I just type, it was great to meet you this morning or whatever it was, right? Thanks for coffee, whatever I wanna put. Here's my card. It's exactly what I do, okay? Then I hit send Then it says, do you need a follow-up reminder? Yes or no? Now, I do know a lot of times if you click on yes and then you set this and then you close it, you have 417 follow-up reminders that you didn't really mean to set. Just so y'all know, if from this page you could click OK, it will not set one. So you don't have to have 
417 follow-up reminders that you didn't take care of. So you can either hit OK or you can say yes and set one. You can set it for a day from now, which is what the, the default is. You can even tell it, I want to set it for a certain day and time. You know, somebody tells you, hey, follow up with me Tuesday at noon. Perfect. I got you. Or you can set it for maybe one hour from the time they view it. That's even better, right? This becomes your crystal ball. <laughs> I love it. All right. So we're going to take that off there. We're going to hit OK. Now I've sent that card. Now I know in my activity that I've sent that first card with them. So maybe in a week, I set a follow-up. I'm going to give them a quick call. Do people answer the phone? No. And then I'm going to send them card number two. Maybe I have a follow-up call to that first card, right? I now know the activity I've done with. Kathy, with Jane, with whoever, right? Because it's right here in my phone. Again, shuffle becomes your brain. It becomes your little crystal ball of sales. You know where you are with a warm lead. You remember under tags, maybe you tag them that you know that they want to see the next time XYZ product is on sale. And you're just sitting there and you're texting and doing the things that people like to do in the way that they like to do business. Because under notes, I'll even tell myself, this person likes emails. This person likes text messages. This person wants me to call them the next time XYZ is on sale. I just let this thing think for me so I don't have to. Okay. Whew. Okay. That's my little feel on contacts. Anybody have questions on contacts? You're welcome, Genevieve. It's nice to meet you. Uh, questions on contacts. Anybody? Good, good. Good on contacts. Okay. All right. Um, so then, did my screen go away? Where did my screen go? I went, there we go. Okay. Then contacts and sending. Okay, so let's talk real quick about the sending. So that, why did I not save myself? There I am. Okay, sending. So real quick, we'll go through sending. So when you have a contact and you're going to hit my shared card, and you choose the card that you're going to send, here's all your choices for sending. So you can send via text message, obviously, right? We just texted it to myself. That is a really good tip, by the way. Add yourself to your own shuffle and text yourself or your spouse or a friend and ask them to push all the buttons for you and see if they go where you think they go. You can send via email. So it will use your default email address and it will send, it'll generate an email with a link. You can also generate a link. What does that mean? That means that if you want to put your card on, say, Instant Messenger or any messaging platform or Facebook or anything like that, you can, right? So you can go post the card um, and put it anywhere that you want to. Um, I use this a lot when I am doing, um, matter of fact, I'll go over and I'll do it from my computer. So say, for example, I want to post that card that we made on Facebook. So I'm going to tell it that I'm going to share it. And then I want to share it to do, do, do slow. Here we go. Lead capture. I just want to share a link. Okay. So there's my link. So I'm going to share this to, where's my Facebook? Facebook. When I put that link in, going to populate that card that we just made onto my Facebook account. Okay, so there's that photo. Remember I told you that was going to be the default photo. But when you when you post a Facebook on your desktop or laptop versus your phone, you can delete. Do I have this right? No, it's opposite. If you post it from your phone, you can delete the link. If you post it from your computer, you have to leave it. Okay, that, I have it opposite. So if you're posting to your Facebook on your mobile device, you get that in there, you see this pop up, you see the, the, um, the link here, you can take this out and then type a little thing, click below to view, blah, 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 whatever it is. On desktop, I don't know a way to take that out of there. So you can just type in front of it, click below. Right. Blah, blah, blah. There it is. Um, okay, so then the other the other tip on that then would be 
is if I am, have met somebody, say I've met, I've met somebody on social media, but I still want to know if they view my link. So I don't really know them, know them. I'm not texting them something, but I want to know if they viewed it. I can still add them to my contacts, right? So maybe I meet Jennifer, um, uh, I don't know, Jennifer, uh, give me a last name, Davis on Facebook. I tell myself that this is where I met her. I want to know if Jennifer Davis Facebook looks at my card or not. So I create her. I share a card with her. This one. And I'm just going to share it with the link. So then I'm going to go over to my messenger and I'm going to go to Jennifer Davis because we're messaging each other on messenger or wherever. And I'm going to put that link in there. It's still going to tell me if Jennifer Davis Facebook looked at that link because that link is as uh, connected to her. So again, I love to know when somebody's looking. Um, if you guys have watched Michael Ray and Edwin do their trainings, that's basically your bridge, right? You, they've asked you for information. You're supplying the information. You're bridging the gap of the information needed and the information um, given. And then you know, hot lead, they've opened this card 14 times. Cool lead, maybe they never looked at it. So maybe they weren't as interested as they said they were. Where am I gonna put my time? I'm gonna put my time into those warmer leads. Right. I want to go to the people that are looking at what I'm sending them. Uh, question, question uh, without a campaign. Um, yes. If I'm sending it to a person. Yes. If I send, if I text or email or link it straight to that person, it tells me that individual opened it. The campaign is a broad place. So if I wanted to make a campaign, um, for example, I'll just pull it up. I have a campaign in my Instagram, in my um, profile. <laughs> Think of the word. So if you click on my profile on Instagram, I know that somebody viewed that profile. My phone didn't go off because I have the notifications turned off. But um, I know that somebody viewed it. I don't know who, but I know somebody on Instagram is looking at my profile. And here is that lead capture. So um, campaign is general, somebody viewed. Individual person send, that person viewed. Two different things. Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, so, all right. If, cause what I've been doing, well, you know, I'm new. Um, I was going to the browser and I was copying it from the browser and putting it in Facebook comments, but that doesn't tell me if they open it, right? Correct. Ah, Correct. okay. So if I'm sending it to an individual on Messenger, and there's so many people I'm gonna share with that aren't, I don't have their text or email, right? That's right. But but if I do, if, if I do share it with a generated link in email, in, in texting or in Messenger, how mm -hmm. about, what if, oh, it has to be to a direct person. So it can't direct be, person. I can't, I can't use it in comments. Correct. Um, you could, but that would be, I mean, that'd be a couple extra steps. So it just depends. I mean, if I could, I mean, if I'm fast enough, I'm just going to make a quick link and tell myself where I put it. Right. So even if uh -huh. it's, um, but typically if I know, like, I'm just continually going to comment with this one link. Yes. Just use that as a campaign, make a campaign that says, Facebook comments, oh. right? Because oh. then you know that that Facebook, so to me, a campaign is really good. If you want to know, um, like when I, I've done some Facebook ads for um, my, my group and some different things, I wanted to compare what Facebook said my statistics were to what I say my statistics are in shuffle, right? I want to know the click-through rate. Maybe you are a, um, Maybe you're a realtor and you want to put some signs out in the neighborhood and you're going to put a QR code on that sign. How many times is that QR code getting clicked through? Is that sign, whatever you're doing, like maybe that open house sign, is it getting viewed? Is it getting clicked on? Maybe you're doing um, a poster or an ad somewhere and you're putting a link or a click through. How many times did it get clicked on? Was that, right. was whatever you spent for that ad worth it? 
right? right. Or for me, um, it may be a, a Zoom call. Maybe I take a link, I make a, a campaign and we'll do campaigns next time. I promise. I know we're talking about something different, but um, I make a campaign link and I tell myself that this is going in the uh, April 16th call uh, for shuffle. And I'm going to you know share this link. Well, how many people looked at it? Because then otherwise, am I going to go back to that Zoom meeting, right? If it was a networking group over the past year that we've all been on, on, on Zoom for, I would put a link in there and be like, okay, that network meeting got me this many click-throughs and this many you know appointments to follow up with people, where this one, not so much. So maybe that one wasn't worth my time. Uh-huh. So okay. to me, that, that um, getting that information back is really right. important. It is. Yep. Okay. All right. I got to process that. Thank you. But I'll, <laughs> I'll be on, to, I'll be on tomorrow too. So absolutely not a problem. Not a problem. Anybody else have any questions? So, I mean, share how to build, we kind of walk through that, how to use your contacts um, and how to share the different ways to share the different um, methods to share. Do you guys have any other questions on those three topics specifically? We covered everything that good. I love that. Good question, Kathy. Quick yeah. question on sharing. Yeah. The QR code. Can that sh- the QR code? It can be shared on Facebook, right? It can. I'll tell you though. I've had people ask this before. So you can share it on Facebook. You can share it on Instagram. People put them on their card sometimes. Just remember that they're on. They're probably on their phone, and so they're like, "Well, how do I?" I, I can't get, you know, they get all confused. There is a way to do it. But they're like, how do I read a QR code that's, that's not? So, hey, buddy, can you come read this QR code and tell me what it says? Because <laughs> somebody else is going to have to have the camera, right? Um, right? So you can, but people get super confused about, like, how do I read a QR code? And it's, sitting, it's right here. I need it. Um, I do put them here. I'll show you one trick I do. If you guys haven't seen that, this is my daughter's idea. I'll give her full credit. I do have a QR code on my lock screen so if you if if i meet you at a networking event you're in a super hurry and i don't even have time to make you a link or put you in my phone you can just zap my business card from my home screen um i would think your best bet is to put it on something so like i have it um where they are for the networking group that i run i have them everywhere of course i have them on little signs like in little plastic things on the tables i have them on my presentation i have them i mean just i print them out and put them everywhere so you can but just remember people are going to be like how am i going to read this facebook has a reader that will read from your library that's what i'll i'll leave it at that you can do it it's really simple but people most people don't know that all right thank you yeah 